friends, in a recent video, I showed you how I designed a stencil and had it laser cut, and I used it on this basket. I found a scrap piece of burlap and I used the writing and a little bit of the flowers to stencil on to the front of that to zhuzh up my upcycled basket. So now I'm back to show you how I use it on the top of a picnic basket and make a beautiful bittersweet prim fall sign. This stencil can be found in my Etsy shop and I'll have that link down below in the description and tagged at the top of the comments. Welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. Let's get started. So my friend Chris gave me this lid to a picnic basket and I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. I've hung on to it for a while, but I finally decided what I wanna do. And I wanna do this side because I love all the little uh, nail holes and the rust and the black that has bled through. So I think it looks gonna look really cool. I have all my paints out that I think I'm going to use. And I also have a picture of the bittersweet so that I can kind of get a feel for what I wanna do. This is dark taupe in the Craft Smart Paint, and I'm gonna use this to start off with, I'm going to stencil my crock first. So I'm gonna use this paint and just dab it on. I don't have any uh, sponges, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my paintbrush. It works just fine. I had a little bit of bleed through on the side, but I was able to clean that up. It was just a tiny little spot and I really honestly could have left it, but um, I did kind of sand it off a little bit once I was done. So it wasn't that bad. I went through and did one coat and then just gave it a little bit of a dry with my heat gun. And here, see, I'm just showing you the tiniest little spots, really, that wasn't much, but it just kind of irked me. So I was like, I might as well get it done now. So then I decided I would go ahead and do my bittersweet prim. I'm gonna use this whole stencil, all of it, and I just show you my vision of what I wanted to do with it. So I don't think this has to be just for uh, fall. I think the colors, you could change it and it could certainly be done for Christmas or Easter or anything like that. All you have to do is change the colors. So because the letters have to be uh, hooked to the stencil, you get a little bit of a line there. And I just like to fill them in so it looks nice and full. So I just take a smaller paintbrush with some black paint and connect those lines. Now I'm just gonna take that uh, paintbrush that I used to stencil with, and I'm taking the black paint that was on it and just brushing it onto my crock, just making it look a little bit more distressed and giving it some more definition. So now I'm taking my stencil and see how the leaves are down, uh, folded down over. I'm gonna make that so it goes down over the top of my crock, the hole at the top. So it just looks like they're kind of coming down over that lip. And I'm going to also tape it off at the top because there is a piece to the basket lid that uh, is sticking up above where I want to stencil and I didn't want to get any paint on that. So I put a piece of tape on top and I also lifted the stencil and put it down underneath as well. Now I'm going in with some of my Dixie Belle paint. This is the color Latte and I just wanted a little bit of a different tone for the I guess the vines you'd call it. So I'm using this lighter color for that. Now you could certainly switch up your colors. You could do a black croc with, uh, you know, this is just my vision and my colors that I wanted to use. But, um, you know, you can certainly use your imagination and do whatever colors you wanted to do. So once I got that main stem done, I'm just going along and using my tape and making some, a tendrils maybe I guess you'd call it of just vines that are just kind of going off in every direction going down the side and as you can see I'm using the whole board I want it all to be filled in now I had to ask for a little bit of help from my friend Tracy I sent her a picture and said should I take some of this and go so that it touches the bittersweet prim and kind of brings that in because it looks like it's kind of set aside from everything and she agreed and we kind of talked it over and so 
You don't see it till the end, but I go ahead and I extend these little tendrils up to the bittersweet word so that it kind of just touches it a little bit. Now I'm just showing you, I have some orange, very orange, like pumpkin-y colored paint and a little bit of that dark taupe. And I am mixing them together to make a lighter, uh, browner colored orange just so it looks more primitive to me and I think it blends in better with the picture. I'm using the back of one of my bigger paint brushes to make the little dots for the bittersweet. And in the picture they're going by, it looks like they're in a little shell. So I'm going to make uh, a little shell for the outside. So I'm gonna use my mustard paint and a little bit of my latte and mix them together to give, to just tone down my mustard paint and give it a little bit more of a primitive mustard color. And I'm just taking a smaller brush and making a little shell around my little orange berries. And that way uh, it looks like they're just encased in that with the little orange sticking out just a little bit. This was such a fun little project. I'm really not a painter uh, or anything like that, but um, I, I don't know. I it, This was just really fun and it didn't take much to to do it. Now you could always add more orange. You could always add uh, leaves. I decided not to do the leaves, but you could. Uh, I didn't want any green in it, but you could tone down a green color and put it on there for some leaves. I took a little bit of black paint and I'm just in certain spots going over it to highlight some of the vine. And then I turn around and just kind of sand back anything that I've done. Here you can see where I went with the bittersweet vine up to the B in bittersweet and down through the word just so it all kind of felt like it was together. I also did a number four in the little bee uh, swoop there. I can't remember exactly what to call it but it's something about a bee and this is finished for me. So just a reminder, as you layer your paint, you want to let it dry in between, hit it with a little heat gun. It's such small amount of paint, it will dry very quickly. Then you can go on to your next step. And I hope you enjoyed my stencil project today. Let me know down in the comments if you did. And you can find that stencil on my Etsy shop. And I'll have, again, I'll have that link down in the description and in the comments pinned to the top. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.